Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Nigel Mbayek, application engineer and your host for today's Autodesk Virtual Academy uh, presented by Katif Technologies. Uh, I'm joined today by Javier Chavez. How's it going, Javier? Good. Um, so today uh, what we're going to be going over, as you can see on the screen, Inventor Sheet Metal Basics. Um, and the reason we've chosen Sheet Metal for this week is, uh, I guess, we've had about 90 AVAs at this point going on for almost two years now. And Sheet Metal's kind of eluded us the entire time. Yep. Um, I've had it on the schedule multiple times, and it gets pushed for something else. Um, but uh, we're finally getting to it today. So definitely one of the most requested topics um, from users. How do I get started in Sheet Metal? Um, how does it work? Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of customers that I see are using things like AutoCAD for Sheet Metal and have been for a long time. Um, and certain, there is like, you know, a very easy workflow to take some of that legacy data into Inventor and just create those 3D models out of it. Um, and how we'll show that to do as well today. Uh, so if you have any questions, definitely post them into the GoToWebinar chat box at any time. Um, and we'll make sure to address those either during the session or during the dedicated Q&A session at the end. Um, did I miss anything there, Hav? No, I think that's perfect. I mean, uh, I know it's a basic topic, but at the same time, you know, if you don't design sheet metal parts, you're going to use all the other tools, most likely. Uh, and then suddenly you'll get that one sheet metal part that mm -hmm. uh, you need to create. So. Um, you might not be as familiar with that tool, and suddenly when you try it, things might not work out so well. So, so certainly, yeah, we'll definitely make sure that you leave here today knowing you know how to get started in the tool and uh, start using it in your workflow. So uh, let's go ahead and get beginning on this. All right, so perfect. Um, if you guys don't know me, um, my name is Javier Chavez. I've been with uh, Katif Technologies uh, 13 years now. So I need to update that slide. Uh, time goes by really fast. Obviously, I felt like I, I just edited that like yesterday. Uh, but you can see, you know, I, I've been teaching, working with um, tools like AutoCAD, Inventor, uh, and Vault uh, simulation, all of those for quite a long time. So uh, again, that's a little bit about me. And if I talk a little bit about the RV industry, uh, recreational vehicles, motorhomes, travel trailers, uh, just as simply because I spent a good, you know, 12 plus years in that industry prior to me being at Katif. All right, so what we actually have is, is some basic steps that we need to take. The first part of it is setup. We're going to go ahead and tell how to uh, tell Inventor how to behave. And in, in doing so, it's going to control every feature that we create. It's going to control the thickness, uh, bend radius, things like that. And of course, you'll be able to deviate. But during the setup process, uh, you're going to define a few things so that you know it, de it behaves a certain way by default. So the next step, we'll do the modeling part. That's actually creating the flanges and faces, things like that. And of course, at some point, we need to check and see if what we can, uh, what we design can be unfolded. So we'll create a flat pattern. And last but not least, we're gonna document what we have. So those are the four basic steps. And if we take a deeper look into the setup portion of it, um, you know, it should eventually give us a part that looks like this. But again, if we take a look into the setup portion of it, uh, you'll see that we have to define a rule. And so this rule determines the material that's going to be used. So, you know, it, we can get a good weight, uh, but we could also identify and separate our rules by that material because they have different properties for uh, unfolding. So a stainless steel versus a uh, aluminum might unfold differently. You might assign it a different rule so that you can calculate that, that unfolded version of that flat pattern correctly. It stretches a little bit differently. And of course, there's gonna be different thicknesses. So these three things are defined in a sheet metal rule, uh, the material, the thickness, and the unfolding behavior. So let's go ahead and take a quick look uh, inside of Inventor. So inside of Inventor, we're gonna go ahead and create a new part. And if you notice, when you go to create a new part, there's always been this sheet metal template. And so uh, we have a standard part and a sheet metal template. And if we click on each one of these, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but at the bottom right, uh, you get a little box that kind of shows you what you're going to get. Uh, there's a, bench, uh, a bit of information here that shows you what you're going to get. You, you typically get them, uh, use this to model a solid uh, model like what you see here. And of course, if we switch to sheet metal, OK, this lets us know that um, we're going to be using this to model the sheet metal part. So the two files are almost identical. In fact, I'll start off with a standard IPT. So in the standard IPT, 
if we take a look at this, I've got no sheet metal tools up towards the top left. Um, it's just your 3D modeling tools. Um, and there's always been, uh, as long as I can remember anyways, this button at the top right to convert an existing part into a sheet metal part. So it's not a sheet metal part just yet. And even before we get started you know, doing any modeling, I can go to FX parameters and see, hey, there's no parameters here. Um, and so in just a moment, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and convert it to a sheet metal part. We'll get all our tools in uh, to be able to you know, create and define our sheet metal rules and things like that. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And sure enough, right away, I get my sheet modeling tab with all the, the sheet modeling tools that I need. So I can go ahead and you know, take a quick look at these. I've got you know, tools to create stuff, uh, modify you know, sheet metal features, and so on. So if I take a deeper look at FX parameters, even though I have nothing modeled, I've got all these sheet metal specific parameters here. Okay, All these pertain to sheet metal. Um, and if you notice too, we cannot change them. They're all grayed out. We don't change them here. Um, that makes sure that you know, every time you work with a sheet metal part, the parameters that you use to define it are consistent. Every single time it'll be spelled T-H-I-C-K-N-E-S-S for thickness and so on and so forth. So uh, all these numbers are here. And the way you control them is through the setup portion of this, which is the sheet metal rule. They show up here on the setup panel. And so uh, you can convert to a standard part again if you needed to. Um, however, if I click on sheet metal defaults, this is where these rules live, okay? So at the top of all this, we have our sheet metal rule, okay? And it sort of has these subcomponents here. So the rule has uh, a material uh, that gets in, uh, defined there. It also has an unfolding behavior or rule that gets uh, defined there. And even the thickness, right, comes from, uh, again, the sheet metal uh, rule. So it all kind of generates from that. And so, um, we'll take a look at that. We'll create our own. If I click on the pull down, there's some that are there by default. Ideally, what you want to do is probably populate that list with all the different ways you choose to create your sheet metal components. Some are going to be uh, a thicker aluminum. Some are going to, uh, going to be, you know, maybe a thinner uh, stainless steel. Uh, some are going to be just a, a, a cold rolled steel. So uh, we got all those different choices. So if I click on this pencil, uh, what it'll do is it'll take me to the styles that define these. And it's literally the the, the style and, and standard editor that you're used to. This is where you see uh, lighting, right? And we're not going to use that now. But then you see your sheet metal rule. You see the, the sheet metal unfold rule that goes inside of that or gets defined by that. And so we'll start by taking a look at this here on the right-hand side. We'll take a look at the fact that, you know, this is where you define the material. So if this is supposed to be a stainless steel, you can you know, tell that rule to, to change your part to a stainless steel component. You see your thickness here. Um, so every time you create a feature, you won't really have a choice on the thickness. It's gonna obey this rule. If I take a look uh, over to the right, this is where I see my unfold rules. And there's only two available. And this list comes from left-hand side. So you might choose to define different ways to unfold your components here. And so uh, let's take a quick look at that. Let's go and take a look at this default K factor, which is you know, what you're gonna use most of the time. And the default K factor is the simplest way to determine how uh, we're gonna add material as this part unfolds or stretches to calculate the flat pattern, okay? And, and you could ask, actually you know, uh, re remove material at some point too, but this is basically the K factor. It's a percentage of the thickness, so it's 44% right now, and it's always measuring from the inside of a bend. That's the neutral axis that stays the same length no matter what as you unfold and uh, uh, create a flat pattern. Okay. So you might have different K factors for different machines. So keep that in mind. You might have these different K factors because different machines bend uh, and stretch the metal differently. You might have a coining machine uh, that creates a 90 degree bend. You might have a uh, brake press. Uh, there's all kinds of different uh, tools and machines to be able to do that. And again, from facility to facility or manufacturer to manufacturer, these numbers could be different. And this number also changes just depending on the material. So you could easily have a big list here of different K factors uh, for different machines. Okay, uh, What you're defining here is a, a list, a library of, of, of K factors. 
And you could use a bend compensation uh, option where you create this custom equation. This is much more difficult, but it is more precise. Uh, you could also sort of create a spreadsheet uh, as well that kind of says, hey, look, I've got a 30 degree bend and it's an eighth inch radius and um, the material is uh, 0.06. Stretch it this much or add this much material. Uh, there's different ways to go about this. But again, default K factor is uh, what's most common. And if we want to create our own rule here or our own K factor, uh, we can go ahead and click new, right? It's copying the default, the one that I have uh, highlighted. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new K factor here of maybe 0 0.41 and I'll name it accordingly. So um, I'll go ahead and do that, okay? And so uh, now I have this 0.41 K factor and I can go ahead and tell it, you know, this is gonna be 0 0.41 instead of 0 0.44, okay? So here's that spreadsheet option. I can create a, a, a bend table, right? And I can add lines to the, uh, uh, to the table here, different thicknesses. And through that, I can do this uh, a little bit more accurately. Uh, with that said though, we're gonna go back to just the linear option at 0.41 and we're gonna go ahead and save it. Okay, so now that I have this saved, I've got more choices. So when I go back to the rules here, this drop-down list now reflects all the different unfolding rules that I could possibly have. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other things that get defined in this rule. So the sheet gets defined here. Uh, we can decide you know, how we're gonna show punches if we wanna show punches. And, and that whole K factor thing, by the way, is, is an advanced topic. We could easily you know, um, send you some information on how to extract the K factor. You could definitely bend a piece of like four inch metal on a machine and extract the K factor for that machine. So uh, we can send you some information on that and, and share it with you. So when you do create punches, you have the choice, you know, to show it in different representation types. So 2D sketch, uh, 2D uh, representation here with the center mark, uh, center mark only, right? I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as the form uh, feature. And this is just for the flat pattern, by the way. So. How do we want to show that? Uh, we get to decide, you know, what the reporting angle is going to be. So you're either going to report A or B on your drawings, on your documentation. Bend, you know, 135 degrees or maybe 45 degrees for the for the B there. Okay. How do you want to report that? So default is A. I'm going to take that. Uh, if you look at the bend here, we decide, you know, how the relief by default is going to take a, a, is going to look. And so at some point when you're adding these bends in the middle of edges, you might have to create a relief to be able to make that bend. So they're straight. We got numbers and dimensions according to this uh, tabulated uh, uh, set of um, uh, values here. And I can go to make this round, really the same numbers here as well. And if I go to tear, we're assuming, hey, we're just gonna snip a little bit of, uh, uh, we're gonna make a cut on that edge and maybe with some tin, sip, uh, tin snips, make a slit there to be able to make that bend, okay? So I'm gonna set this to, uh, to maybe round and uh, the relief width A is, a, is a, uh, a factor of the thickness. So it is equal to the thickness, uh, thickness here, thickness here, thickness here, right? And maybe before I go too much further, let's go ahead and create my own style. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. I'm not gonna save this one. Uh, instead, instead of making changes to the default, I'm gonna go ahead and call this SS.1. It's gonna be stainless steel, it's gonna be 0.1, okay? So, uh, okay, I've got this new one, I'm defining it here, and this one is gonna be round, and we're gonna change the, some of the values here. So the default bend radius is gonna be equal to the thickness. Okay, so if I make it 0.1, um, that's gonna be the bend radius is gonna end up being 0.1 if the thickness is 0.1, right? Over here, a factor of the thickness, the, uh, the bend or the relief depth is half the thickness, so it's gonna be 0.05, right? And so if I go to the corner uh, option here, this is how I define, I'm gonna go, uh, how, how we define where, how we're gonna trim the corners. And again, we could have a round option, uh, we could have a tear, right? We're assuming when it's in the flat pattern, there is no relief and you're just gonna let the metal sort of rip there and, and a fracture. So uh, trim the bend, it's always gonna go to the bend area. So these dashed lines represent the start and the end of the bend. Okay, linear weld creates a pie-shaped cut there in the flat pattern. 
And that basically allows us to maybe weld that gap uh, close. It'll be fairly close there. And then arc weld is very similar. It's just a bigger gap to fill in with uh, more material. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe uh, leave this as round, right? I can decide how big that relief is. And same thing here with the uh, three bend transition. I got a uh, round bend with radius, a full round, uh, an intersection here where it just goes to this little uh, uh, vertex here or no replacement, right? And so you're gonna have a fairly big hole there, you know, in the uh, finished product when you're when it's all folded up. But in the flat pattern, this is what we'll uh, show and that's what they'll cut to. So I'm gonna set this back to round with radius. How big is that radius? You get to decide here. Um, it's equal to the bend radius, which is equal to the thickness at the moment. So let's go back to the first tab. Let's go ahead and change our thickness. This is gonna be 0.1, like we said, okay? And uh, for the material, we're gonna go ahead and look for our stainless steel, all right? And we're gonna go ahead and click save. So from here, if we wanna actually use that, we can make the stainless steel active. Right now the default is active. And so I can right click, make that the active style. It's now stainless steel 0.1 and it'll build my features accordingly. So I can go ahead and click save and close. And if I come back to this, you know, this is how it's going to behave. It's going to use these rules, this thickness, right? The material is going to be stainless steel, the unfold rule. Um, I didn't change that, so I'll, I'll quickly change that. We said maybe it was going to be this 0.41 K factor. So I'll save that. Okay. And now SS.1 uses this rule, uh, this rule that says, hey, we're going to use stainless steel, 0.41 K factor. The thickness is updated. Now, what's kind of nice is if uh, you want to kick a part out very quickly and you don't care to necessarily make a, another style, you can deviate from these. Uh, you can change the thickness from what it is here to whatever you want, and suddenly, uh, you know, it's going to behave a little bit differently. You can deviate with the material, make it something different like plastic, which wouldn't work too well, um, or you can set it back to obey the rule. Same thing with the unfold rule. We can deviate here and use some other rule as necessary. Uh, but again, we're changing the default behavior for every feature we create. So I'm gonna just go and continue with the defaults here. And it's now set to obey those rules. So with that said, um, I'll go ahead and, um, and, and continue here. There's nothing to apply, nothing changed here. So I'll go ahead and close this, but that's now our default uh, rule. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop back into uh, uh, the presentation here, right? So we defined all those things. Uh, the unfolding rule, just so you know, affects the flat pattern. It's going to be larger or smaller depending on what that percentage is. And so, uh, again, look for some documentation on how to get that or extract that uh, information. Okay. So we're going to start now using some of the basic commands here. Uh, to create sheet metal. So I'm gonna start real simple. Eventually I'll create a part that fits within an assembly uh, at some point, but I'm just gonna start with some of these commands, just so you know what they do, what they are. And in a few of those, for instance, fold, I'll incorporate that into one of the other uh, uh, exercises that, that we'll show here. So the basics, uh, let's hop back into Inventor. So now that I've got this, right, uh, I've got my style set up. Uh, it's gonna use stainless steel as opposed to, you know, any other material. I'm simply going to start left to right again. I start with the sketch. Almost everything starts off with the sketch. And so um, the most basic thing you can create is your first face. And so I'm going to go ahead and start sketching here. It doesn't matter what you create as long as it's a, um, a flat object and our sketch is going to make sure that we keep it flat. Uh, we also want to make sure maybe that uh, we have some edges to add flanges to it. This is going to be something like a box. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with the rectangle. Okay, and obviously I can size this, constrain it the way I need to. Uh, you're gonna wanna go ahead and, and do that just like you normally do. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch and I'm gonna click on one of the first tools available. So this is kind of like the creation tools in the 3D modeling environment. Almost all of these require a sketch and I'm gonna start with the face tool. So basic tool, it just it's just like the extrude tool except you don't get to decide how thick it's gonna extrude. That's decided by the uh, sheet metal rule, right? So there it is. I get to uh, sort of extrude it. 
I need to decide, you know, this way or that way. And um, there's not a whole lot to do here except for, you know, go ahead and create the face. There is a bend option where you can immediately add a bend. However, we don't have anything else created. So this is really our only option where we're going to create this. And, and sorry, that actually shows up here. You would be able to pick edges if there was some other face somewhere and immediately join it. Um, but with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. All right, so next basic tool is a flange tool. And so if I launch this, in the flange tool, I'm gonna add a bend somewhere along the edge. And uh, depending on which side you pick, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. If I pick this bottom edge, it wants to you know, go ahead and bend downward. And you could always flip that. Uh, there is a flip button that'll let you do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my control key and you know, deselect that edge. Again, if I pick the, the correct edge, I just get the right direction the first time. Okay. So there's my edge. Here's another edge. As soon as I add a second edge, if I'm gonna do more than one edge, in fact, I could do all of them at the same time, it knows to add a relief here. Okay, well, how big is that relief? Um, you know, what rules is it abiding by? It's all the rules in the defaults that we set up. So this bend radius is, again, in that rule set, and you can see bend radius equals bend radius. Well, what is that? If you hover over it, you get a tooltip, and it gets, it's 0.1 because it was equal to the thickness in the style. So now we're starting to utilize those, um, those parameters and at any time you could deviate. So this is just the default, it equals the thickness and I can go ahead and make it something larger. So now I'm deviating from that and that bend you saw get a little bit larger and that is measuring from the inside bend radius. So uh, some basic tools there, right? And you can go ahead and decide, you know, uh, at some point, okay, when I start looking at this scene, again, we've got some defaults here and when we get to, you know, some of the options here, uh, relief shape, uh, corner, it's using some of these options. So the gap, I could set the gaps for all these um, flanges that I might create, all four, five, six, seven flanges right here, and maybe bring that gap a little closer. Again, that's using the defaults, but I can always deviate. So you notice I can't make this zero. I want to weld this. I, I can't make this zero. I can't have edges that touch. What I can do is get pretty darn close, right? So 0 0.001, that creates a tiny gap that still allows this to unfold. If I were to actually touch those, then it couldn't unfold. So that's why when we put in zero, it shows up red, it's out of range, it's gotta be uh, above zero. 0 0.01, 0 0 0.0001, right? As long as there's a gap, it's okay with that. Okay, so that would change the gaps on everything you see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, another edge here. And if I were to rotate over here, it would do uh, the same thing. That setting is global to this command. So every every uh, gap you see there is at 0 0.001. So if for whatever reason, I wanted to deviate on just one corner, these icons let me do that. So it shows you know what the dialog box is set to, but I can go ahead and say, you know, for this one, I'm actually gonna make it just 0.1, right? Or 0.2, something much bigger. And so I could also change the shape. So instead of that one being round, I can go ahead and make this one uh, a square, right? So I'll click okay, click okay uh, once again, and you'll see that, okay, I told it in the style to make it round. I got to deviate here. Uh, I told it in the style to keep a gap uh, equal to the thickness and it's much larger here. And then if I go to this corner, right, I got this much smaller gap. Okay, so um, there's there's one tool there, right? So these are the probably the most basic tools that you'll you'll find in here. There's other tools that, you know, eventually if you create a, a, a flat component, you might wanna go ahead and round uh, the corners Okay, even if it's not flat, just to remove sharp edges. And so this is a version of the fillet tool, but just for sheet metal, right? And so we can add multiple corners and set our radius to whatever we want. And so what the tool does 
I'll go ahead and use the corner chamfer tool, similar tool. Instead of allowing me to add fillets here along the long edge here, it filters them out just to the thickness edge. And so here's a chamfer and it's currently set to a quarter by quarter. I can define it, you know, quarter by angle, uh, two distances. Uh, in this case, I just want to go ahead and put it here and define it uh, as one quarter by one quarter. Okay, so a lot of the things you'll create uh, will require openings or holes. And so it's a matter of simply sketching them. And you could sketch uh, on an existing surface just like you're used to. Uh, in, in fact, I'll go ahead and uh, sketch this here. And in some cases, uh, what you might need to do is actually create a opening or a hole or something um, that goes on a corner or wraps around a corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this rectangle Right, and I want this to wrap around the corner. Now, I might want to dimension a quarter inch away from an edge over here. So, you know, normally we project geometry and I can go ahead and project these edges, but I can't necessarily just pick an edge and decide, you know, how far I want to put it from the unfolded edge. So you have uh, uh, tools here to project the flat pattern. So very similar, however, it's temporarily going to unfold it, right? into my sketch and so what I see now is the extents there of the unfolded version and so with that I can go ahead and move this back and maybe dimension this a certain distance away from the unfolded version that way I know if I go to create this and wrap it around there I can go ahead and make it onto the sheet metal instead of actually flying off the edge there so I'm going to go ahead and make this an eighth inch right and I can certainly constrain the rest of this relative to these yellow lines or edges. So with that said, time to cut. And if I go ahead and cut this, um, if I just cut with the defaults, you know, it knows to just cut through the thickness. So that's the difference between this and the extrude command. It's using just the thickness uh, and only cutting that much. Again, if I just use the defaults, I'm not gonna get what I want. It cuts through the thickness literally and that's it. I actually want it to wrap around and get an eighth inch away from this edge. So if I go to that feature, I can go ahead and edit that feature and tell it to cut across the bend. And it wraps the cut around the bend, taking into account the K factor and making sure that I get an eighth inch away from that edge. Okay, all the other options, very similar to what you're used to in, in like an extrude tool. So um, there it is, right? And, and I can you know plan that or work with that exactly the way uh, I meant to, which is an eighth, uh, eighth inch away from that edge. Okay, so uh, lots of commands here. Can't get into all of these. Some of these are almost identical, uh, but some of the basic ones we, we got covered here. And a few of these I'll continue to work on as we go through some other examples. So let's get back to uh, the presentation for the, uh, portion of things. Let's talk about modeling in an assembly. So for those of you guys that said, hey, you guys design these parts to support a structure, a motor or something, this is for you guys. And it's no different than designing a part within the context of an assembly. In fact, that's what you're doing, except you know we're just gonna do it with sheet metal. So three steps there that uh, I noted, right? You might wanna extract your reference geometry, project edges, if you will, um, and get that into your, your part that you're gonna model. Uh, you could easily create disjointed faces like you see here in yellow and then quickly connect them. So we'll do that next and it'll be fairly quick. So um, make sure you, you pay attention here. So take a look at this. This is that same model we were just looking at. And basically I need some bracketry to connect uh, this welding machine to the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new part and this is nothing new. Uh, on the assemble tab, if you click create, you can decide, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new part. I'm gonna call it bracket. And uh, I'm gonna use a sheet metal template from the get-go, okay? So there's a checkbox here to constrain the sketch plane uh, to the selected face. So I'm gonna allow that to happen. And if I click okay, it's waiting for me to pick a sketch plane for the base feature. So I wanna connect it to this. This is gonna be my sketch plane. And right here, when I make this connection, it creates a new part and attaches the XY plane to that surface. So all of this is grayed out because we are now editing the bracket. You can see that here in the, in the browser. That is the active part. Uh, all these other parts are grayed out. 
All right, so I chose a sheet metal template. Uh, I might need to set up my defaults or maybe import them in or grab them from the style library. I'm just gonna go ahead and, the, uh, and use what's there. Um, so I'm gonna start sketching. And this is where you can see the actual work planes. This is that XY plane. It is attached to that face. Okay. And so you can rotate the, in this and just uh, get a better idea as to where you're at. Um, no problem doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and project some important information. So I wanna go ahead and project the holes that I want to tap into and create my bracket geometry on, right? And so I also wanna make sure I grab some edges here, right? And so I wanna make sure that I grab uh, those edges and start creating my geometry right about there and create some bracketry that, that fits within those confines. So uh, with that said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start um, creating some geometry. So I'm gonna create my face, okay? And if I look at it this way, okay, I could make this maybe uh, line up with this edge, constrain it to that edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and start sizing things up. So I can put as many constraints as I need to for this. I'm gonna go ahead and make this four inches even, okay? Um, maybe dimension this uh, a certain distance away from this first um, uh, hole. Let's go ahead and make that 0.75, right? Pretty close to that edge. And um, at, at this point, Right, this is almost fully constrained. I'm gonna go ahead and tug on this. I need the width. So I'm gonna go ahead and dimension here and make this 0.75 as well. So there's the first portion of my bracket that's gonna actually attach uh, there, okay? And um, I could use those circles uh, to extrude this or basically create a face, okay? So I wanna be careful that I don't extrude into the solid. So if I go this way, I'd be interfering with this. And if I go this way, um, touching that surface and it's fully constrained onto that surface at this point. So part of my bracket. Now it needs to connect over here to the welder. And so I'm gonna start a new sketch and actually I can actually pick this plane right here. Okay. I'll go ahead and project some geometry here. In fact, I'll project the entire face and obviously I can you know, create my bracketry a little bit different than that if I need to. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Now, one of the things I did, I sort of guessed at the width here, okay? And I'm extracting a, a, a width or a height, I, I should say, really, for this edge and this edge. So I don't think they match, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and create a face anyways and then connect them. Okay, again, I, I'm extruding away from that face. I captured that, I obviously could have created it a little bit differently, made it bigger, made it, made it uh, match uh, this component exactly in terms of width, but I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Or better yet, there is a bend tool out here that I can use after I'm done with this, but that same tool exists right here, okay? So I could actually tell it right now, early in the process, instead of launching the command afterwards, that I wanna connect to this edge and immediately it starts creating geometry that connects to this edge okay so uh, lots of ways to do this um, i'm gonna go ahead and deselect that edge because i want to show you a few more options in terms of that tool so i'm going to deselect that i'll click ok all right so if i get back uh, to this component. You see how I could have made that connection very easily. Um, I'm gonna open up this component all by itself. Okay, so a couple ways I could have done this. I could have um, launched the command afterwards and just a, a few ways we could have done this. Now, obviously if I pick this edge and I pick this edge, uh, the bend does something like this. This wouldn't work. I could click okay and it just, it would not like it. Uh, what I can do, is uh, maybe change here to add a double bend. So one bend, two bend, it sort of adds this S or Z shaped bend to make it happen. Now the welder's in the way, so obviously that's not gonna work. And uh, I did pick this edge and this edge, so uh, that's why it's doing what it's, what it's doing there, okay? So I'm gonna cancel out of that. And I'm gonna show you, again, just a, another way to go about this. How about we pick outside edge to outside edge? So what it does now, it's gonna extend uh, the face of 
one of the the, uh, the, the faces here to have this vertical uh, face get added in. So one entire face would be get added in here and make that connection between the bracket and the component. So this is valid. This is uh, something that should work with this. And um, I can click OK. And now I've got a bracket that actually connects over here. And I've got a little bit of uh, a remnant here that I can probably cut off just because one area is thicker than the other. But that might be what you're going for as well. So I'll go ahead and close this and get back to the assembly. And you can see I've got something that holds up my welder. So let's go ahead and take a, a look back uh, at this again, right? So we extracted uh, some uh, reference geometry, we projected edges. Um, by the way, if you hold your control key down, uh, they do not become adaptive. So just something to think about because adaptivity kind of makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, so uh, again, hold your control key down as you're projecting those or uh, using those, and it'll just put the geometry there with no connect uh, connection back to the original geometry. So let's take a look at uh, more stuff, okay? So what if we have uh, existing files, DWG files or STEP or IGES files? We can import those and still uh, unfold those, even though we didn't create them with um, Inventor Sheet Metal tools. Maybe they got created in another tool such as SolidWorks or Pro-E. As long as the thickness is consistent, you can unfold those, okay? With DWG files, uh, you might have legacy flat patterns. Somebody figured out the flat pattern uh, for a component and you've got old DWG files and you now need the folded version to use in an assembly. So both those scenarios exist. And what we'll see here is when you work with a, an existing AutoCAD file, you could basically copy and paste or import the geometry in and start to use the fold lines or the bend lines to fold that back up. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll start with the AutoCAD file, and then we'll go and find maybe a step file. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into AutoCAD here. And so this is just one of the ways you can get the AutoCAD information in. Uh, you can simply window across it, right? Right click, go to your clipboard and copy. That's one way, right? Now keep in mind what we're looking at here. We've got the outer extents here, and then we have these lines uh, right here. These are our bend lines, okay? So one thing you wanna make sure is that if you get these bend lines um, from somewhere, make sure they go all the way across and touch end to end uh, through the extents of the, the sheet metal, okay? So if it was cut short, this wouldn't work, right? And then we've got openings, right? So there's openings here, openings here, and, and so forth, right? So. Now we're gonna go ahead and use them in uh, Inventor. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, another new part, a new sheet metal part. And there's obviously ways to import this, um, you know, besides just cutting and pasting, but I like doing that. I think that's one of the easiest ways to do it. So um, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start my sheet metal part. I'm gonna start sketching here and I'm pasting 2D information. So it makes sense that I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in my sketch. I'm gonna right click and choose paste. Now, if I wanna be maybe a little better about this, um, one of the things I could do as I'm getting ready to paste is do another right click. Instead of just pasting the geometry, I could do another right click and go to paste options. And I can control, you know, cause AutoCAD doesn't know what you're drawing in, inches or millimeters. I can control how those import units uh, are gonna work. I can tell it to constrain endpoints and apply geometric constraints. That means if there's lines that are perpendicular to each other, go ahead and add those in as perpendicular constraints. So I'm gonna take the default here and I should be okay. I've got you know line work that's constrained end to end, right? Uh, there's no dimensions on here. So you might take this a step further and fully constrain this and add your dimensions, add any more geometric dimensions, but I'm basically good to go here. Everything's closed up. Uh, we are assuming that the drawing, you know, somebody, uh, you know, closed up the line work. There's no gaps here showing, you know, uh, a gap maybe in here or here. Uh, this has to extrude, so it's got to be fully enclosed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. Zoomed in uh, really close there. But again, I've got sheet metal tools. I'm just going to create a face 
from all these little boundaries it created. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and offset this down. And so uh, I'm telling it to sort of extrude or offset that down. And I'll click OK. So I've got the flattened version here. We're assuming that that drawing shows the correct flattened version. You might need to go to your sheet metal defaults and, and apply the K factor that they're using and apply the thickness that was you know, documented in that drawing. But when you're done, you're ready to start adding the folds. So I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the sketch here. There's my sketch. I'm going to reuse that to fold this thing back up. And so here's the fold tool. Uh, you could draw from scratch your flat component. And if you just draw a line uh, across uh, you know, a surface in a sketch, make sure it touches ed 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 uh, edge to edge, you can add a bend or a fold right on that line. We're just using AutoCAD lines to do that. So in this case here, if we use the fold tool, right? Again, with all these tools, you got defaults. Here's a default bend radius. Uh, here's the default unfold options, the bend uh, tools, right, that are get, getting created. Uh, so I'm gonna use round and maybe deviate just a little bit. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pick on the shape uh, tab here, my bend lines. So if I push that down, right, it gives me a little preview of what's, what it's gonna do. It's, it's gonna bend it the wrong way um, so I got options here and I can tell it to uh, bend in a different direction. So you get to see that happen there. And so I want all these bends going up, out and up. And so this now looks good. Here's the uh, angle it's going to bend it up at. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I wish it was a better preview. Uh, so there it is. It bent it up and I hit apply because I need to do that again. Apply. Again, apply, and again, apply. I, making sure to watch these arrows and making sure that I'm getting exactly what I'm looking for, okay? So um, one more thing before I get out of this, we use that line to create the bend, right? What does that line represent? So right here, it's the center of the bend. Uh, right here, it would be the start of the bend. And right here, it would be the end of the bend. So that would place these spaces in different locations uh, if you use these uh, other options. But we're assuming, hey, it's the center of the bend. So there you go. We got a folded part from a 2D AutoCAD file. And now I can use this part in assemblies, right? So it might be a legacy part that hasn't been built in a while. Uh, I'm ready to go with that one. Okay, so uh, very similarly, we can go ahead and maybe import or open a uh, a step file. So I'm going to go and find one here for us. And so I think I have one uh, here somewhere. There we go. So here's a step file. Got created somewhere else. Don't know where. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Okay. So we're converting the model as opposed to using a reference. Um, and there it is. Now, I don't have sheet metal features here. In fact, this part doesn't know it's, you know, going to be a sheet metal component, so I need to convert it, okay? And if I try to work with this and try to unfold it or add more features, it simply won't let me, okay? It doesn't know how thick this is as opposed to the sheet metal default. So sheet metal defaults say this should be 0 0.120, okay? So I can just you know uncheck this and instead of using the rule i can go ahead and put in my own measurement right so i'm going to go ahead and choose here to measure this edge and it says hey it's 1.6 millimeters um, and i can get rid of this and let's see if this works so uh, if that was correct i should be able to click create flat pattern and it should flatten out it doesn't so there's something wrong here i'm going to come back to this I'm going to delete my flat pattern, okay, that shows up in the browser, okay? We'll talk about that in just a sec. But what's wrong here is that my measurement is a little bit off. Uh, so if I use the measure tool and actually measure that edge, I can go ahead and find the, the actual value by changing my position uh, here to show all decimals. So it said 1.6 millimeters. When I actually take that edge and measure it, it's like 1.60002. And for that reason, 
that's why it didn't unfold because I went I went and put 1.6. It's got to be exact. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that value, and now I can go to my sheet metal uh, defaults and paste in that large number, and I should be able to unfold it now. Uh, on top of maybe using other tools such as like the flange tool and adding more flanges, I can still build on top of this, um, and you can count on this now flattening out. Okay, so legacy data, and you can still add more features on top of this. Um, when you do create that flat pattern, uh, it shows up as a different object here in the browser, and um, what you want to note here is that if you ever delete this, any drawings that reference that flat pattern will also be gone. So um, in this case here, it will not, it wouldn't repair itself. So that's why I had to delete it. Uh, now that it's folding, I'm good to go. Um, and I shouldn't have to ever delete that flat pattern again. Okay, so let's come back here and uh, continue on here. So the, the next phase of this is maybe creating some documentation. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and take a, a cover here for uh, the blower that we saw in one of the previous slides here. And we're going to go ahead and, and start working with it. So if we jump back to Inventor, uh, we'll open that file up. It should be uh, this file here. Okay. And um, we'll go ahead and open up this part all by itself. Okay. So this is a sheet metal part. We've added multiple bends here. And, um, and flanges, we've added cuts, we've done all kinds of stuff here, we've added holes, probably projected from the assembly. And uh, first thing we need to do is just make sure there's a flat pattern, so I'll go ahead and choose here, go to flat pattern, beautiful, it's, it's, it's uh, flattening out, okay? If I click on bend order here, okay, this will show me the current bend order. And I don't remember right off the top of my head if it does this in the order of creation or maybe the backwards, the reverse order. It looks to me like it's the reverse order. So these flanges probably got created last. And so it's one, uh, two, three, four. Um, so they probably got created in, in the reverse order. Now I can change that order. So if there's a machine very specifically needs to create maybe this bend uh, as the first bend, I can go ahead and double click on that balloon and make this the first bend, right? It should be unique. However, sometimes you could, could make it a duplicate number in case, you know, two bends actually get created at the same time, right, in one station. So that becomes number one, this becomes number two, everything, uh, you know, gets adjusted, okay? So you get control over that. I don't know that you'll know that right off the top of your head, the bend order, uh, but you can do that, and this, this goes back to documentation, okay? So, okay, great, I've got a part here. Uh, that I can work with and start documenting. Let's go ahead and create a drawing. And uh, I'll use an IDW uh, here. And uh, drawings are, are get created the same way. We use the base tool. There's no special uh, sheet metal tools up here for that. What is a little bit different is that when you actually browse out and find your sheet metal component, you can document the folded version, right, or the flat. So right now, what I need is an isometric view of this component. So I'm gonna throw that up here. I'll click okay. And then I'll go ahead and create the flat. So if I click on the base tool, same part, I wanna document this, but this time I wanna go ahead and put the flat version. Okay, so if, if that's not the side I wanna look at, I can go ahead and rotate it, okay? So again, rotate it. To where you want right and so i'm going to go ahead and document the original side and while i'm at it i can go ahead and add in the bend extents um, if there was punches in here um, so advanced topic for another day uh, we could show those as well um, but i'll show you what the bend extents look like so if i click oh well let's go and make this bigger all right so there we go so these lines are where the bend starts and ends, and of course, this is a center line. I changed my mind, I decided I don't want those. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe uh, right click and edit the view, and I could remove the bend extends. Okay, so now it's time to document this. You would dimension it as normal, right? So maybe the overall uh, dimensions I can go ahead and put in here, right? 
And uh, if you did the math and, and tried to add up the, the, the sides and uh, every bend, you know, it'd be hard to get this number because it is applying the K factor to this. So uh, just keep that in mind, right? The K factor is going to change the overall uh, dimension. Now, there are sheet metal tools over here uh, for annotation, hole and thread node tools. I, I don't know that that's really unique uh, in, in terms of sheet metal, but uh, punch tools, definitely unique. Uh, the chamfer tool, bend notes. So that's, I think, the big one here. So I can document these one by one. I'm going to launch that tool. And every time I pick a bend, I get some information. You're going to bend this down 90 degrees with a radius of 0.12. That's according to the style, right? And according to how it was built. Um, when I do have that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and uh, hit enter or uh, escape, rather. And I get a grip when I hover over this. So I can go ahead and pull this away, and it becomes a leadered note pointing to that bend. Okay. So you could do, do this one by one, go to each one. Or here's another option. I can click the table tool up here. So this is used typically to create just a, a, a table, four rows, 10 columns. You can put whatever information you want from this. Now, if you pick the view, it reads what's in the view. In this case, it's a sheet metal part and puts in information about sheet metal parts. It's going to identify every bend and give it an alphabetical uh, ID or a numeric one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go with the defaults here, but we're going to see bend ID, direction, angle, radius. I'll click OK. And I've got a little table right, that identifies each bend, which direction, the bend angle, and the radius. Now, when I look at the actual bends, they're numbered. They're identified here as bend three, four, and it's using that order that we talked about earlier. So now if I hover, I can go ahead and drag this out and you know create leader text here pointing to these bends and work with that. So folded or flattened, you've got geometry that you can now document and work with. Okay. So one last note, I'm sure you know somebody wants to know, you know, how do I get this to my uh, CNC machine, maybe it's a, a, a laser uh, cutter or water jet or something like that. Uh, I'm going to go back uh, to the original part. And uh, one of the things you could do right away is go to this flat pattern that you see in the browser, right click, and uh, you could check out the extents, uh, or you can save this as a uh, DWG file or, or DXF file rather. And so there it is, and this will have the flattened version, which you see there, as a DXF. You could save it anywhere you want and then use it in your CNC machine. Okay, so uh, just a little uh, bonus there. Uh, I'm going to get back to uh, this here, right, and just kind of summarize some of the things we talked about. This is a real, just uh, an introductory thing uh, in terms of what we're covering. So. We talked about setting up using those sheet metal defaults, right? Making sure that we have the right parameters, bend radiuses, thicknesses, uh, unfold rules. Those were the, 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 the more important things there. Okay. Um, you could model from scratch. We started to do that with that very first example. Uh, didn't get too far in this. Or better yet, do it in context, where it fits, where it functions, right? And that way you make sure you meet that, that function uh, requirement. And if you have, you know, other files such as, you know, SOLIDWORKS files, STEP files, uh, DWG files, you can still create a model from those and, uh, you know, create usable parts that you can use in your assemblies. Okay. Uh, creating flat patterns is just a click uh, away from that. Um, so if you're in that, that model, uh, you can click on that button. You should get a flat pattern. If you don't, start to look at things that might give you uh, some issues. Typically, it's thickness. Right. There's a few other things that you can look for as well. Um, uh, again, we can send you some information on, on some of those best practices uh, with that. We'll, we'll go and make those available to you guys. Uh, but um, maybe the last thing is creating the, the documentation. So creating drawings is almost identical to creating drawings with the regular part, with the exception of a few tools. Tools for annotation, tools for creating views to create those flat versions. So uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up here and just maybe open it up for some of the questions that came up uh, during the, the, the presentation. So, uh, Nigel, I'm not sure if you've already kind of flagged some or maybe uh, maybe you've already answered some of those. 
And there's a few that have come in, but before we, we get to questions, just want to remind you guys, um, if you do have any, go ahead and type them in. Um, but we are also working right now on a, on a proposal for a accelerated sheet metal class. Um, so we already do have a training class for sheet metal specifically. Um, you can take either one or two days. Um, it's a standard training class, but we're working on something um, as like a half day online kind of deal. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for that um, via email um, or let us know if you're interested in something like that via the survey. Um, there is a box there for other. Um, definitely let us know. So uh, there are a couple of questions in here already. Um, one that came up a lot is uh, the fact that Hobbs got this really cool tool that makes arrows on his screen. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> do you want to share what that is? Yeah. Um, Google Microsoft Zoom it. Okay, free tool. I use it all the time to teach and, and, and uh, do stuff. It's got a bunch of other functionality as well, but it's a free tool. It's easy to use and I use it to teach. Look up Zoom it. It's all one word my, from Microsoft. Yep, Z-O-O-M-I-T. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, I asked Tom about that a couple of weeks ago. And so um, I need to start using it a little bit more. But yeah, it's, it's super cool. And uh, I guess that answers a couple of people's questions. Yep. Um, super interested in what you're using. Initially, I thought it was like Snagit or something. Um, another question is, uh, in regards to the documentation, the text size is super small. Um, how do you go about changing that? Oh, so the only reason the text size was small, just so you know, is because the paper was huge. It was like a C or a D size paper. So uh, don't let that fool you, right? It was just, it, it was probably an eighth inch tall, but it didn't look it right. Look it, right? So um, I'll go ahead and take a, a quick peek at that and get back to the, the drawing. OK, and so, uh, again, this is probably an eighth inch tall, um, but we can double click here. Um, and, you know, this is all coming from um, styles. So there are styles that say, hey, these notes look a certain way. Um, you can go here and maybe change a few things about the, the precision um, settings like that. So what you're going to want to do is right click, edit the style, right click on that, edit that dimension style. Yeah, obviously, if this if it was like this size on an A size sheet, mm -hmm. you run into some issues. But if you're going to print this thing out in like 30 by 40, something like that big, yeah. um, like table kind of size, um, makes sense. Yeah. So what you'll note is that it's a dimension type and the dimension type calls out a leader style. If you go to that leader style, you eventually you'll get to the text style. And so um, I'll go now to the leader style and um, you know, you'll eventually get to a textile, which will probably be, you know, somewhere underneath um, text, label text, note text. And this is where you would change that. And so I want to say it's note text. I'm going to change this to be like one inch. And I think it'll it'll be very apparent. Right. Uh, I'll change this one to. Yeah. So it was note text that it was set to. So one of these labels or dimensions is set to note text. Now, keep in mind that I just changed this to one inch. Anything else that was using that textile dimension is now going to be huge. Um, but that is, that's one way to quickly get to that. And you can see in relationship, the leader is way, way too small. But you know, keep in mind too that, hey, we're looking at uh, uh, a very large piece of paper. So they should be an eighth inch. Yeah. If you're going to print this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, then it makes sense to kind of edit your styles. And we do have a video in regards to styles specifically that we did probably a year ago or so, but it's on our YouTube channel if you're, uh, if you're interested in something like that. Uh, question, is there a way to bend a semi-spherical shape like a spoon? The answer is no. So that's that's a good question. So if if it's if it's bending on one axis, you can certainly do that. Um, if it's uh, so a cone is a good example. It's got one axis. You can unfold that. You can unfold that. No problem. But anything that's spherical, right, is really bold, uh, is really folding on multiple axis. And if you think about the manufacturing process, it's being formed. So formed parts typically can't be unfolded in any tool. Uh, and, and, and there, you might find one that'll do it, but I think it's usually with the caveat that the, the flat pattern is not correct. So. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, in regards to our Fusion 360 users, um, question, 
when does She Metal and Fusion 360 get officially released? Um, it's already out, not officially. Um, there is a way to go through the options and request access to She Metal in the beta form. Um, but expect to see that in, uh, in, the, in Fusion 360 in the next few weeks, an actual live sheet metal um, area in Fusion 360. So expect to see that in the next couple of weeks. Um, don't know when the exact date is, but it's something that they've been working on. All right. Next question. Um, does Inventor or Autodesk offer tools for sheet metal optimization um, for the shop? Uh, to improve yield? Nesting, so nesting software. Um, so there's there's lots of nesting software out there. Um, I want to say yes, and I just don't remember the name. Of, I believe it's TrueNest. It TrueNest, yeah, that's what it is. That's exactly T -R -U -Nest. it. T-R-U Nest. Yeah, and uh, we could probably take a quick uh, peek at that. That makes sense. So yeah. bear with me and I'll, I'll show you what that looks yeah. like. While Hobbs grabbing that, um, let, me, let me grab a couple more questions here. Um, do you have any tips or suggestions as to how to reconcile inventors' bend allowances um, and other settings with specific specific fabrication equipment? Um, in layman's terms, I guess, how to make sure the flat pattern in inventor forms up properly in the real world? Um, this person would love to know if there's a specific procedure for this other than just trial and error. Yeah, so so excellent question. By the way, I've got the True Nest um, um, site up and. Um, you can see it there, it's T-R-U-N-E-S-T. Take a look at it, Google it. Um, if you, you, you won't miss it there, but um, uh, yes, they have uh, that tool uh, available. So something to take a look at. So basically, um, I know one of the things that happens um, on a bend by bend basis, you know, you could have uh, different machines bending this and so different K factors get applied. And so if I go back to the folded version of this component, um, you know, there's several features here. One is the face. Uh, here's a, a set of flanges. If I edit this flange or edit this feature, you know, we could say that at this point when we're adding, you know, these four or five uh, flanges around uh, the, the edges here, um, you know, that this, because it's being used on a different machine, gets a different rule, if you will. So if I get to the bend uh, option here, uh, oh, sorry, unfold rule. I could create five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different unfold options and tell it, you know, for that bend, use this bend compensation table, okay? And that's unique to that feature. So it's it's taken a while because it's actually recalculating the flat pattern as we go. So next feature, okay, uh, another flange here. I edit that feature and I take a look at the unfold options and from my list of you know, various unfold options, I use a different rule, right? And that rule would, uh, you could easily name it to, to correspond with the, uh, uh, machine. with the machine that's actually bending that and the proper K factor for that specific machine. So that's the only way that I know of. Uh, I, I can imagine some logic being applied to this. I think it would be cool um, where you could launch the tool and before you even start applying this, already have tools that are preset for this machine or that machine uh, to correspond with that K factor. Now, extracting the K factor, different uh, uh, different class for that, but there's a, a bit of information out there on how to do that. You can literally bend the tool, extract the K factor by taking some measurements, and uh, basically it's the difference between the original flat version and the folded version when you measure the lengths of the legs, you'll get a K factor uh, that you can extract from that. Yep. Cool. Um, I think that's it for questions for now, but if anyone does have anything, um, definitely shoot that in right now. Uh, like I mentioned, we are having, uh, we do have a catalog class for sheet metal um, that is either lecture style or hands-on. Definitely let us know um, if that's something that interests you. Also, like I mentioned, we're going to be doing a condensed class probably half day or so online um, that we'll make available to everyone. So expect to see an email about that in the next uh, few days or maybe early next week. I'm just going to finalize some particular details about that. Um, we got another question. I missed the initial 15 minutes. Um, could you guys catch me up on that? Um, Let's do it again. Yeah, let's start all over again, huh? Let's go. Um, actually, uh, this is being recorded right now. So uh, when you're watching this later, hi, mom. 
Um, but yeah, uh, if it is being recorded. It'll be put on our YouTube channel, so you can definitely watch it over again on our YouTube channel. I know a lot of people get pulled in and out to meetings um, or conversations, uh, can't necessarily stay put for an hour most times. Um, so definitely check out our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Kativ Technologies. This video should be up probably this afternoon or early tomorrow, um, barring any craziness. Um, shout out to Eric Paul, who's the editor for all of these. Um, so with that, I think that should be everything. Let me just make sure. And uh, yeah, it looks to be just about everything, Hav. So um, like I mentioned, if you've got anything, definitely shoot us a, uh, an email at questions at or a phone call, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, so with that, thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks, Hav, for spending some time with us this morning as yep. well. Thank you. And uh, we hope to see you next week. Next week, we're going to be going over workspace customization in AutoCAD. So uh, those people who maybe missed their classic workspace uh, might be one to go to for you. Um, so yeah, with that, we'll see you all uh, next week. And uh, have a great weekend. Bye.